Hey, and welcome to the Frugal Tech channel. This week, uh, I'm bringing you some Q&A. And for the month of February 2018, let's get started. And the first question comes from Coco, wants to know how many computers do I own? Uh, currently, I have five and my wife owns a MacBook Pro. So a grand total of six computers. Now, four of those computers are actually in service and working, and one of them uh, is down and the other one's getting ready to be sold. Um, I buy my computers for particular purposes and uh, so just kind of starting off what you don't see is my uh, Asus UX501 laptop that's actually monitoring the video output of my Canon 70D and I do some other audio stuff on it as well and um, I can also use it uh, for travel to run Vegas or DaVinci kind of I just have several different purposes that I use this particular computer for. The big problem with this computer is the monitor. I never could get quite color accurate to please me. It still has a bit of a yellowish tinge to it. And that's even using a uh, color calibrating tool didn't uh, make that much of a difference, but I don't know, it's a very good computer. Now I have right behind me here is a, uh, if you can see the shot, an Alienware Area 51, and that is my work and gaming PC. Yes, I do enjoy PC gaming, and um, but most of the time it's used for work. Spreadsheets, uh, stuff I could do on something way less powerful. But I also was editing with uh, Vegas Pro. Uh, it was Sony, and then it became Magix. And it's a very good machine, very powerful. The problem was is that uh, Vegas Pro just got to be real slow once you started doing anything advanced with color grading and color correction with it. But we'll talk about that in actually answering another question. So yeah, I kind of have a computer addiction. I won't lie about that. That's kind of my weakness. Hey, some, some guys buy cars and boats and stuff like that. I buy computer gadgets and stuff. Hopefully that answers your question. Next question comes from Anjai McPherson who says, why does the 2015 MacBook Pro cost more than a 2017 model? Anjai, you're probably comparing the price of the 13 inch to the 15 inch. So make sure you're apples to apples. You can get a 13 inch brand new, uh, the 2017 model, uh, more the base model uh, for less than you will at a 2015 uh, or the 2017 MacBook Pro now. Uh, so there is a 2015 reversion revision MacBook Pro for, still for sale new on the Apple website for $19.99. I bought the refurbished one for $16.99. Yes, I could get a 2017 13-inch uh, MacBook Pro uh, for around that same money, but it wouldn't be nearly as powerful as a machine. Hopefully. That answers your question. I think you're confusing the 13 and the 15 inch. T-Bone wants to know, he says, you have a video about why you shouldn't switch to Mac, but then you have this. Well, um, if you watch my channel and you watch my videos, I've always encouraged getting the right computer and the right tools for the right job. And uh, uh, this is one of those cases where um, I was let down by what uh, Magix was doing with the Vegas Pro product and Apple really had a very nice update to Final Cut Pro 10. And I decided that that would be the tool uh, that I would use going forward. Uh, I started all this with, uh, you know, my first videos I edited with iMovie back in the day. And this channel is about 10 years old. So I've always kind of been impressed with the way Apple handles video editing. And it just really works for me. Okay, the next question comes from Stephen Whitley. Bruce, two questions. One, where did you purchase your tick clock from? It is cool, but I've had a bit of sticker shop when I saw it on Amazon for $550. And does that seem correct? And two, I've seen your videos and others, some backlighting red behind your monitor. You might have a cover this in a video, but I can't seem to find what it is. Can you point me in the right direction? Thanks, Steve. Okay, Steve, uh, I bought mine from Think Geek. Um, I don't know how many years ago it's been, gosh, four, five, maybe years ago. And I paid nowhere near that for it. I'm talking under a hundred dollars. I'm thinking close to around 50 bucks when I bought it. I don't know what Kool-Aid this person on. I actually seen what you're talking about. And I don't know what Kool-Aid they're drinking, but they ain't never going to sell for 550. You just have to be a, a moron, I guess, to do that. I'm sure if you uh, search eBay, you'll find 
probably you'll find one of those for sale a whole lot cheaper. Now, as far as that light behind the monitor, that's a uh, outdoor LED like pool light deal. I got for around $15 off Amazon. Hopefully that answers your question. Okay, so the next question is really more of a, a statement than a question is it comes from a Zanaris Faldor who writes, uh, I thought this is a tech channel. Uh, you're going to tech that's one to two generations behind, for example, Apple products. Seems like this is bizarre world. Just seems strange to me. Also, I'm disappointed you've completely discounted a Linux solution, even though they probably have some of the best video editing tools out there. If you have Caden Live set up configured properly, it blows Premiere, Final Cut, Vegas Pro, etc. out of the water, but each his own good video and channel. Uh, let me address this to the best of my ability. First off, uh, when I set this channel up back in 2008, uh, and I'm sure this is still the case today, that you have to select a category for your videos. At the time, it was 100% nothing but pure technology in the discussion. And that's the category we just kind of got lumped into, okay? That being said, I've also worked hard to, uh, to diversify the content a little bit to include classes, such as uh, CRM is a class of mine color correction and Final Cut Pro and business type classes. I've also incorporated some vlogs about what it's like to be a small business owner, as well as my continued love of gadgets and occasionally a video about uh, cameras or how to make a buck with technology. So um, just diversifying the content. But I think what you meant was kind of in maybe a more, maybe I misread this, but more in a way, why am I not buying and reviewing the latest, greatest state-of-the-art technology? Well, for multiple reasons. Number one, this is a hobby of mine. I don't do this professionally. I don't have the financial resources to go out and buy every single new whiz-bang product out there. I'm not a bleeding-edge kind of guy. I tend to like uh, tried-and-true technology. And when you see something I review, generally it's something that I bought to use that I'm sharing with you on this channel. Very seldom do I review a gadget only to return it. I do have an Acer Chromebook that I'm going to be reviewing uh, that Acer sent to me for review. But all in all, um, the technology that I show is the stuff that I use and I don't always buy bleeding edge stuff for budgetary reasons, or in this particular case, something where the extra cost would not justify, in my mind at least, the uh, the benefit. Uh, for example, we're talking about the 2015 MacBook Pro. I've gotten so many comments and questions about this thing. And uh, honestly, I bought this for a very precise reason. Apple updated uh, uh, Final Cut Pro to 10.4 and they, they really, stepped up their game on color correction and color grading. They built in uh, tools that you used to have to buy plugins for. When I started this channel, I used iMovie on an iMac back in 2008. And I, I kind of cut my teeth on this thing. And then I decided I would go over to the World of Windows a few years ago for video editing. And quite frankly, I like Vegas, but when you start doing, um, you know, color correction and adding LUTs and that kind of thing, the whole thing slowed down a crawl. And that's on that beast of a machine, this Alienware, uh, you know, uh, six physical cores. Um, yeah, I mean, it's just not good. And as far as uh, uh, Linux and Kid in Life, uh, that means, uh, you know, like obviously you don't want to run uh, a video production or video editing suite in a virtual machine, which means I'd have to devote a machine to running Linux. Why? Um, why would I want to mess around with all that when I got something I already know and I already, that already works and is a proven commodity that's got great support? Why should I uh, do that when I don't uh, have to? Not knocking your solution, it's just not for me. It's not for millions of others out there that use Premiere and they use Final Cut or use Vegas day in and day out. Linux is not a solution for everybody. Glad you like it, glad you're happy with it. And uh, uh, whether it really truly blows these products out of the water, I don't know. I can't imagine that it really, really does. But at any rate, that'll wrap up my Q&A session for this month. Join me next month for another Q&A.
make sure you leave those comments down below. Any questions you may have, we'll answer them next time around. Thanks so much. Bruce Naylor. Take care.